The Bengals are eight and six. They've won three straight games, and yet injuries are something that we unfortunately have to discuss. Let's look at where they're at in the playoff picture, plus DJ Reader's injury, Jamar Chase, and the fallout ahead of a huge, huge matchup against the Steelers. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Erpine of allbengals.com. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and join the 41,000 plus subscribers. Shout out to you, and thank you so much this holiday season for subscribing and supporting the channel. Andrew Fox Miller, our channel manager, coordinator, editor, every hat that he wears, uh, and myself, we we certainly really appreciate it. And if you're looking for a gift this holiday season, enter the jungle. Get yours today at CincinnatiBengalsBook.com or wherever books are sold. And this Bengals team is doing something that not many teams in franchise history have done. You lose as many players as they have to injuries, including their star quarterback, and yet they are still in position to make a postseason run. As it currently stands, they are the sixth seed in the AFC. If the season ended today, they would head to a familiar place, Arrowhead Stadium, for a third straight year to play the Kansas City Chiefs, who are currently the third seed. The Bengals, if you look at the New York Times playoff simulator, have a 35% chance as of right now to make the postseason. Sun or Saturday's game against the Steelers is huge. If they win that game, their chances go up to 53% just by winning. If they lose it, they drop to 13%. Now, those percentages will change based on who wins and loses around them, but it's a huge swing game for this Bengals team, and they're not going to have DJ Reader. It's really unfortunate. DJ Reader out for the season, a torn quad tendon, and it's the same injury he suffered in 2020 with the other leg. And it just sucks, to, to be quite honest. It sucks for a bunch of reasons. First, DJ Reader, the human, he's awesome. Like, I, I love chopping it up with DJ Reader. I've never hung out with him. I feel like it would be fun hanging out with him. He's a big movie guy. He's a great dad. He's really personable. He's someone that has a really good personality. Obviously, a few weeks ago, he had a great clip of saying how he, he looks at all the haters and everything like that. And I'm sure he will do that during this process and road to recovery because guess what? There are going to be a lot of doubters because he faces an uphill climb now at 29 years old in a contract year. And so it sucks for him personally. And it sucks for this team. That is the one area where you look at, and there's there's no one behind DJ Reader that you look at and say, oh, well, he can come in and help them make up for the loss of DJ Reader realistically. Now, will someone play that spot? Of course. But it's really, really hard to replace a DJ Reader. It is, and the Bengals will figure it out. Maybe they claim a tier tart on waivers or try to sign him if he clears waivers. He was released by the Titans. If that happens, we can dive into him. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on him right now because it's just speculation, and there's some question marks about Tart. but from a talent standpoint, that would make sense. Outside of that, I think it's all internal, and whether it's a, a Dominique Davis, who I, I think some certainly like on the practice squad, uh, maybe you promote him and elevate him and give him a shot. Zachary Carter is certainly someone that they're going to rely on, and he came up big on third and fourth and short against the Vikings in overtime. You need him to step up now. Zach, this is why you were drafted. You've had a year plus to to come in and and show it now. Be great against the run. Be a a quality run defender, um, but also be able to get a little heat on the passer. That's what they need on the interior. Can Cam Sample uh, make up some of that? Maybe they try to move Sam Hubbard inside some, which – with Miles Murphy playing the way he is and played well again against the Vikings, maybe you do that and you put Hubbard next to BJ Hill. They have a really good rapport together as is. And so maybe you go Hendrickson, Hill, Hubbard, Murphy. I I could see that. I I could certainly see some of that. I think it will be a committee, but there is no way uh, around it. You can't replace a DJ reader. So it's a huge, huge loss. I feel for him. I hope he makes a full recovery. Heck, I hope he's in stripes next season balling again, and uh, we'll see if that's the case. Other injuries, uh, DJ Ivy out for the season. It sucks. It sucks. I talked to him after the game. I knew it was serious. He was on crutches. Everyone knew it was serious when he was carted off, but uh, 
just really, really unfortunate. Young player that was coming on, seventh rounder out of Miami, was getting defensive snaps, certainly special team snaps, but defensive snaps in recent weeks. And uh, it sucks that, that he's out for the year. And then Jamar Chase, he's day-to-day, and I think he's got a shot to play this week. It'll be interesting to see how close he is to 100% if he's able to play. It's certainly a, an injury that, as a receiver, you're dealing with a shoulder. You have to be able to move up and down and all around and contort and land and all of those things. It's uh, it's a tough situation, but we know how important Jamar Chase is to this team. I think he's going to give it every chance, uh, give himself every chance he can to play. The good news is it's a full seven days. They're not playing on a short week like they have a couple of times. And it, it's crazy to think of, but the Bengals have won three games in a span of 13 days or 12 days rather i it's it's wild to think of but it was the monday night game saturday or sunday and then saturday so so to do that and and find a way to get to eight and six that's great but this matchup against the steelers is huge and beating the steelers would essentially end their playoff chances and probably eliminate them depending on what else happens but Safe to say that. Meanwhile, this Bengals team, if you get the nine and six with two to go, you feel really good uh, about where they're at. And I think the magic number is still 10. Not much bounced the Bengals way from a playoff standpoint outside of the Bengals winning their game. But Zach Taylor said it on Sunday. As long as they keep winning, it doesn't really matter. The Bengals currently the number six seed. We will keep you updated on Jamar Chase. Man, it sucks about DJ Reader. This team is going to have to rally. They rallied on Saturday. We'll see if they can continue to do that. We will have you covered every step of the way starting on Tuesday when the Bengals start to prepare for a Saturday matchup with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's at 4.30 Eastern on Saturday, so we'll hear from Jake Browning tomorrow, Zach Taylor tomorrow. The latest injury updates will be at practice, and we will have you covered right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. For Andrew Fox Miller, our channel coordinator, I'm James Erpine. Thank you so much for watching CBT, Cincinnati Bengals Talk.